everyone, Mingi Kazi today. That translates from Swahili into English as in a lot of work. Yep, we have work to do. Not that my temperatures have anything to do with the fact that I have to get moving with my patio and opening it up for the summer growing season. Nope, I still have to get on with it because I need the grow space for some storage. And seeing as this takes a lot of time, a lot of shuffling, I thought I'd take you on for the ride. We have to do the following today. First of all, we have to clean some masks. Lo and behold, we have some dirty masks. Gotta clean those. We also have to find all the candidates that are scattered around the patio that did enjoy some of the rain and put them back in the mask. We have to assess whether they are in active growth be it new growths or roots, do they need fertilizer or just plain RO water, so we'll take care of that. We also have to take everything off the west side rack so that that west side rack can go into the east side. Now, it's a bit of a gamble, it's far too cold still at night for my top guns to be outside all the time but in the recent 10 days i've been hardening them off we've had some warmer nights and then we've had some colder nights where i would normally bring them inside this time i didn't do that i am really really pushing the envelope here risking things but needs must needs must we also have to put the tolumnias up against the hedge they have not had water for two days seeing as it was nasty outside too cold for them to be watered and then sitting indoors with hardly any airflow. We also have to deal with a torn and worn curtain. So yeah, for the past two years, this curtain has served its purpose. It is a normal indoor curtain. It's not the regular white shower curtain that I would prefer and I use all the time. Couldn't find it two years ago. Recently found them again and got myself a new curtain. Much needed. I don't need all this tatty look around my gorgeous orchid. So we got to change that as well. And we've got to wash the other one that is protecting the west side of the portico. Gotta wash that and get that hung up as well. Busy busy. But I'm not complaining. Been looking forward to be able to do this especially with a proper water repelling shower curtain. What's not gonna happen today is that the orchids that are indoors they are not actually moving outdoors just yet but I need to start the procedure of getting things reorganized so that eventually if I have to hustle by using the grow space as a storage place then at least the major skeleton bulk of what the patio is about for the summer months has been done. So, thank you so much for joining me. Let's get to work. I'm going to start with removing the pots from this little staging area because as the pots come in from the west side, this will be their holding place <laughs> until I can move the rack. Okay, let's find Digbiana mask. That's the big one. And let's check if Digbiana is in active growth. So I'm not gonna do this with every plant, but this is how I decide what goes into the reservoir. And Digbiana is not yet in active growth. No active root growth. The eye there might be swelling, but we're still a ways off for considering that really active growth. So. I have my bucket with the green, that's always fertilized water, and the bucket with the blue is always plain RO water. Let's stir this up a bit. Okay, let's get some plain RO water in here. Not an act of growth. You just get plain water. Move it away, create space for the next one. Mimricophila Thomsoniana, in active root growth. Find the right mask, active root growth gets fertilizer. So. 200 parts per million are in here. If I have to, I go half and half, but Myrmecophila can take 200, just to encourage those roots. Next one. Let's have a look at the one just recently divided. Got some good rain, active root growth. I'm going with half and half. It's just 100 parts per million in the reservoir because I don't want any salt buildup on that pot. Those roots are importante. After she's had a good rain flush, I'm hoping to encourage them. Quick update from the division, we're still a go. And that little growth in the back there, even though the eye hasn't popped out of what's remaining of the sheath, 
it's growing new roots. That could be the sign that that is also going to be a new growth, which would be amazing, because normally there wouldn't be any root growth right there if the eye wasn't about to do something. So yeah, let's get you out of the way. Find the pot for my Murasaki Komachi. Inactive growth. And it's starting to rain, so we're going to stop this for now. I thought I would get away with it, but I have to protect my equipment. But for now, this is what is going to happen. We'll take a break and we'll be back. And we're back with a little bit of sunshine. Okay, I'm not going to be repeating all of this. There's another probably 40 orchids to do, but at least let's have another look-see. Lelia pacavia, not in active growth. So just regular, plain water into that reservoir. There we go. Next one, Neophenicia falcata is waking up. Happy days. Guess what? Thanks, bird. Jeez. Woo, happy days. All the roots are starting to extend, branching in the pot. I love it when Neos wake up. I love that. So, active growth. Not quite full on, so we're going to go with 100 parts per million. There we are. Done. Now, we're going to go to the west side, clear that shelf, and bring everybody to that staging area there, which is now empty, and repeat the procedure <laughs> again until the east side is full. This season, I want to change these pots out because, look, they are intermediate pots. Uh, they don't fit A, the rest of the style of my setup, and I've had to silicon them because they had already pre-assessed holes in them. But, you know, I can't clean them. I'll pop out the silicon, and it's never been really, really sealed watertight. So some of these orchids that belong in these pots are going to go into my standard ones and I'm going to be so happy to get that done too. Let's get a little bit of a bloom intermission in there. And yes, it's dripping onto the Francis Fox. It doesn't matter. There's enough airflow back here today. I'm okay with that. These Tolumnias, however, have been dry. So this is just plain RO water now. Just I want to address them because yes, it is sort of a windy, rainy, off and on sunny day, but they've had some fertilizer right before they went inside for two days. So I'm going to just give them a little bit of a drink with plain RO water, flush out the roots just a teeny tiny bit without risking new growths. Meanwhile, I pretty much know where the new growths are. So I'm just gonna go around them little bit. They don't need much on a day like this. Just a little bit. Some have gotten a bit of, whoops, that hook came off. Some have gotten a little bit of rain on them. This one had some rain on it, so we're not going to touch that. But this little one, little scruffy one over here. Yeah, I'm hoping that this one's going to make it. My Tolumnias have been doing so well, but I do have some that are looking as if they have secondary issues. Not necessarily the fact that it's been cold for them, otherwise all of them would be looking nasty. But you see this one right here? You see how that's just, you know, it's just a ratty looking Tolumnia, even though it grows new growths. This one just has this feeling, this look about it. See new growth? It's got secondary issues. Anyway, it's raining again. So we'll take another little break. <laughs> I'll be right back. As much as I favor my moss on my Rapiculus Lelias when it comes to the summer, you know, giving them a little bit of reprieve from the hot, dry air, I do try to get some of the moss under control, especially around the little pseudobulbs here. Because, yeah, it's going to happen. It's just going to keep growing, which is great. Everything I'm pulling away now is going to keep growing, but if I don't pull some of it off now, it's going to bury the pseudobulbs in the back, and I don't want to 
not see them just in case there's any rot. You see, these are all little old pseudobulbs. They could rot very, very easily, and I don't want that becoming a problem, perpetuating itself throughout the rest of the orchid. So, normally I do this at the beginning of winter, but the problem wasn't that obvious at that time. So this stuff grew out over the winter. So that's another little chore I'm dealing with today. But it seems like this one is the only one that is a little bit too close for comfort in my eyes. Let's get rid of a little bit more right here. A little Rapiculus Lalia maintenance. In about four weeks or so, all this will have pretty much grown back. But I can still see the little guys. What's this? What's in here? You see that? See, that would stay wet constantly, right in between the pseudobulbs, especially the old ones. Now at least it's going to get some air in there. This is Lelia regentii. No new growths coming just yet. Huh. We've got some good roots in there. Just making sure, because she doesn't look... You know, they should be... They do lose their leaves in the back bulbs. That's for sure. That's normal. But my other one looks much better than this one right here. You see the other piece? These were two in one pot when I received them. And this one is doing very, very well. And this one, hmm, maybe just the back of the pot. The mumblings of a Rapiculus Lelia. Fanatic! Last week I already went with the water for the first time and really hosed down the patio. Sorry if there's an echo because I'm right up against a wall. But there's no harm done in sweeping it a little bit before the rack comes here. Woohoo! Some of the wind was going to blow it back, of course. <laughs> but still, got to give it a go. We might get lucky. <laughs> Well, I thought it best to quickly get rid of that. I don't know what that was. Never seen anything black like that leak out of the feet. I can't see a pup trying to have a lick at that. That was really weird. Oh dear. Whoa, gross. What is that stuff? And here I'm using my RO water to spray it off but I can't get the big hose out just for this little thing. I'm working against the elements, but we can dilute it enough. Huh, never seen that before. Black, even, yuck. Now the orchids that I have back here, I am going to position them so that they are in the mask. The other ones that are still out of the mask, I'm going to leave them out of the mask, seeing as the forecast is a little bit wrong, we are getting intermittent rain, so <laughs> right. Here's what's going on now, as I will, in the coming days, proceed to fill up this shelf. I'm positioning the orchids in such a way that the orientation of the pot will be such that they are facing away from the main source of light. I know that sounds weird because the sun actually hits them from this side, but the reflection of the wall is so strong that in actual fact any new growth that would be coming would go towards the main source of light. That would be my facade. Now the Digbiana here is not in active growth. So what I'm doing is to position her far enough away from where Celiano can get at the leaves. I've learned my lesson there. And this one just needs to be positioned in such a way that the new growth is actually facing the main source of light. But because she's just been repotted, she is going to be more tucked in and back so that she doesn't wobble so much. Her normal position is a shelf lower, but seeing as at this point in time I have space, this is where she's staying. Just another example. You can see that the point of growth here, the newest one, it was facing away from the light and now grew more into the pot. This pot really isn't relevant with its positioning because it needs to be repotted, but all the new growths are facing in the direction away from the light. 
And that is why sometimes when you look at my shelves, you will very, very often see just the back of the orchid and all the new growths are facing away from you. Not so much in the blooming alley because that is reverse right there, but here it is. So yeah, always look at the back of the orchid on my east side. Pacavia doesn't have a direction of growth at the moment. There are no new growths, so the position is pretty irrelevant. And a Neophoenicia likes a lot of light, so normally she would be in my blooming alley on the top shelf, but seeing as it's a bit busy there, I am putting her here. Now, normally what would happen here if I could complete the project today is I'm going to be filling all my shelves from the top to the bottom with all the orchids that normally live on the east side. But as my night temperatures are still too cool, there's more protection in the blooming alley than there is here. These guys will be okay for demonstration purposes only. <laughs> By the time I finish this video, they are going back also a little bit more protected because supposedly tonight we're going to drop down to 12 degrees Celsius at the end of April. This is insanity and long-term forecast even all the way through the 10th of May, I am still not hitting 15, 16 degrees Celsius at night. That really, really annoys me. Anyway, they seem to be doing okay. I hope that you could see a little bit of what was going on with my orchid shuffle, my duties and chores for this week, and we shall revisit this area once this rack is full. Hope you enjoyed this video a little bit. Some of the intermissions with the rain. <laughs> Thank you so much to editing. Really appreciate your time, your company, and it's starting to rain again. So have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition though, that you stay safe. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye.